up? Well, I certainly will. I certainly will. Thank you, Bess. Hi, Dr. John. I'm Frank Pilato, and yes, Frank. Um, thanks for seeing me. Uh huh. I'm having uh, a problem with my lawn. It's I water it and I fertilize it, and it's still brown and, and very barren spots, and it looks like it's dying. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I, I wondered if you made any house calls, since you're referred Ooh. to as the doctor, Dr. John. I, I figured you probably didn't. House call. But yeah. You know, well, I really, I really don't I do house calls. I think I need an expert to, to look at it and see, yeah, no. see what's wrong with it. But I don't do house calls uh -huh. because I'm so darn busy here yeah. and, and I can't get away. But uh, I've always liked to make at least one house call, so I'm going to make an exception this time. Oh, okay. I will make an exception to come over and see your lawn. Great. Um, do you have a card or yeah, something I can get to your yeah. address? Yeah, I can. I do right. right here. It has my address on it and it's close by. Here you go. Thank you very much. Sure. I'll tell you what, I can get free here in um, about an hour. Great. I'm, yeah, I'm going right home so I can meet you there. I, I, know, I really I, appreciate this. I know where that is. Okay, take care. Okay, well, thank now you very see much. see you in about an hour. See you in an hour. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Dr. John. How do you do? How do you do? Fine. I, find, I found it all right. Oh, it wasn't, great. It wasn't, wasn't hard to find. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate all it. All right. Okay. Well, this is the lawn. Like I told you, like I promised, it's, it's in pretty bad shape. And I, I, I really could use some help. I, I don't know what I need to do to make it greener and thicker and richer. Any suggestions? <clears throat> we got uh, about four or five options here, and I'll tell you what they are. Okay. One is we can come in here uh, next week, and we can weed kill and crabgrass kill uh, the entire area and leave what grass is left. And if we use a weed killer or a crabgrass killer on here, um, we have to wait at least three weeks Ooh. before seeding. Mm -hmm. now, I'll show you what crabgrass is if I can just find one right. Oh, here's one right here. Oh. This is this is crabgrass. Okay. Now, if I do kill this crabgrass next week, we have to wait three weeks before seeding, and it isn't going to do much good anyway because crabgrass is an annual, and okay. the uh, seeds will come up next year. So the best way to get rid of crabgrass is not really now, it's next spring. So uh, that's one option, but I'm not so sure it's a very good one at this point. Okay. The second option is to use Roundup, our uh, cleanup pro kind of a product on here, which will kill all vegetation, lawn and weeds and crabgrass, and still not hurt your trees and shrubs. Mm -hmm. And in that case, we can uh, uh, seed in, in five days. Oh, that's better. And, uh, okay, so that's another option. And the third option would be to come in here with a um, uh, a rototiller and rototill the area around the outside of the tree here, but we can't rototill under the tree because there's too many roots. Right. And we'd top dress that. When I mean top dress, we'd bring soil in here. About seven yards would cover this. Seven yards? Seven wow. yards. Wow. Right. And, uh, and we'll put that over the top of the roots. Now, when I put soil over the top of the roots, it, it won't hurt the. Uh, I was going to ask. No, it I won't was hurt wondering. The tree. It would if we were putting 12 inches or more of soil, but but uh, two or three inches over the top would not Which hurt. it just doesn't allow moisture to get to the tree, is that the problem? If it's too deep, yeah. If it's too deep, okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, a couple of three inches would not hurt over the top of those roots. Okay. And then we go ahead and seed a, a, a nice shady mix of, of seed. And I have one more option, and I think this is a very good one too. Mm -hmm. We would just seed the outer edge, rototill and seed the outer edge, mm -hmm. but in the center, underneath this huge tree, we would put, put a ground cover, like a juga 
Vinca, Pachysandra, uh, one of your choice. In fact, if you come over to the nursery sometime, I'll show you the different choices of ground covers, and they're beautiful. I never thought of that. Well, that you see, like it's, it's, a good... it's going to be tough to get grass to grow under there. I'll get it to grow there for a few years. But is it just because of the roots and everything? I mean, is there another problem why grass doesn't stay there? Um, I well, seed and... The roots take a lot of moisture um, from the grass yeah. and uh, takes a lot of the nutrients. Mm -hmm. But if we put some soil in there and put ground cover, it would be far better. And if we did use the ground cover in there, uh, even if we just seed, mm -hmm. we have to thin out the top of the tree a little bit. So more, more light. light can get down to Right. That makes sense. And if we did ground cover, we could tie that in beautifully and make it come right up to about where the uh, bushes are over there. Since we were on the subject of shrubs, you know, getting ground cover to maybe blend in with a shrubbery, uh -huh. I don't know if these shrubs are the best bet. I mean, they are old shrubs, and, and I don't think they're doing real well. Um, for instance, I don't know, over here, um, they're green on top, but they've lost all their foliage down here. So, I don't know, and that one over there it died. Half of it's gone, so we've had yeah. to cut it away. I don't know why. Um, any any well, suggestions? Well, part of the problem is they've been here for uh, probably 25 or 30 years. Actually, 33, 33 years, technically. See here, the, all yeah. you have is this much greeny right, right through here, and that's all the green you have. And down here, this is all just naked. Just look, all this is, all this, oh, Whoa. look at that. This is all broke down in here. This is all dead. This is all dead wood. And uh, here's wow. some more over here. Look, see that? This is all God. dead, and this is dead through here. These are all, uh, in fact, that had boxwood silly and leaf miner in there. And you're supposed to spray them in May, and you didn't get a chance to do it, probably, no. obviously. But uh, you've got a couple of options here. One, you can put some bushes along the front to hide all this. Well, that's what I was thinking. Is that worth doing? I mean, are these just going to continue to die? I mean, you could but uh, plant bushes along there. But uh, if, if I had my druthers, if it was up to me to do it right, I would probably yank them all out and take them all out and put in new bushes because it would really make it look sharp with your new lawn and your mm -hmm. new ground cover. And I have... Uh, uh, we have at Maryfield uh, a lot of designers that could come up here and give you a nice sketch. I'd like to show you one more thing over here on this tree, if I could. Oh, sure. All right. Now, on this tree, I was looking at it before while we were talking. Uh, we've got to really trim out a lot of the limbs there to get right. the light down in here. Right. That's no problem. Okay. But I'd like to take this limb off here, this one right well, here. Will that hurt the tree? I mean, it looks like a pretty big part of the tree. No, it really won't. In fact, you've got two trees growing right. up here in this sharp angle here, and this this could break off in an ice storm, and it's facing right towards the, uh, right towards the house, and, yeah. and that's going to go someday. So I'd like to, we make that decision between now and the time we get this job done here, but I think that should come out. Is that going to make okay. the tree look bad, cut no. looking that limb? No, Mr. Pilato, that'll fill in beautiful and be better in the long run. Oh. It needs to be thinned out. It hasn't been pruned a long time. Well, you're the doctor, and... So, now, as far as is, is the lawn here, we can do all this next week. We can put the ground cover in and, and grass seed on the outer edges, and we're all set. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I think that's the best solution. I think the ground cover and the topsoil will be the way to go. It sounds like it would be one of the quickest and get the best results. And yeah. now about the bushes, um, you said you had a designer. We do have designers at the nursery. We have uh, a lot of very good designers. And I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to make a note here and send a designer over here. Okay. And have him present a sketch to you, okay? Okay. And, uh, and if you like it, we can do the whole thing next week. We can put in the new plants, the lawn, and everything that will be done. That sounds great. And I'm okay. excited about it. I think it's going to look great. It's going to be too. the nicest looking house on the whole block. Well, that's good to hear.
You know, there's so many people have lawns that are in bad shape with all the trees and roots. And Today I thought I'd make a nice show out of this and tell you what we're doing here. We're going to put in a nice lawn, and I'm going to tell you what products we're using and why we're using them. First of all, as you can see, we've rototilled this lawn. It's all loosened up. We're top dressing it, putting soil on. And then we're going to go over here, and we're going to have one of the guys put some lime on. And we're using granular lime. And you can spread this lime either by hand in a pail and throw it out with the wind to your back, or you can put it in a spreader. Doesn't make that much difference. We'll probably put it and throw it right out by hand. And then after we have the lime down, we're going to probably put some fertilizer down. Now, if you can see here, I have a big assortment of fertilizer. When you go into the garden center or wherever you buy your fertilizer, you don't know what to buy. Well, I'm going to use this fertilizer right here for this reason. It's a 10, 16, 20 fertilizer, which means it's the first number is nitrogen, which is top growth. The second number is for uh, root development. And the third number is for good health. So this fertilizer or the winter survival are the two of the best fertilizers that money can buy as far as uh, using a good fertilizer for developing roots and for disease control. This one's another good one, and you probably have heard about it, Turf Assurance. That's also pretty good. But I'm going to use wintergreen here today. So I'll put these down and leave the wintergreen stand up here because uh, that's what we want to use. Now, let's talk about the grass seed. I have in front of us here all kinds of grass seed. Kentucky 31 and Rebel and Hound Dog, you've seen them all. And you've seen uh, Jaguar. Well, these are the new tall fescues right here. Hound Dog, Rebel, Jaguar, Falcon, and Fine Lawn. There's about 37 new tall fescues. We have, in our blend called Tough Play, a blend of grass seed that has the best of the new tall fescues in it. All righty? And that's what we're going to use today. We're going to use a blend of the tall fescues. We're not going to use uh, this widely related grass, Kentucky 31. And we could use, if we wanted to, possibly this bluegrass blend. But I really am not going to use the bluegrass here because I think that this tough play is far superior. So we will be liming, and we'll be fertilizing, and we'll be seeding all at the same day. You don't have to wait. There's no waiting period whatsoever. And if by chance your lawn had grubs in it and you wanted to know, can you take care of the grub problem in your lawn? Yes, you can put down a grub control the same day that you, that you lime, fertilizer, and seeding. Okay, it can all be done the same day. Now, after we have the lime and the fertilizer and the seed down and all the products around the lawn, then we're gonna have to rake the lawn lightly. And we'll see that in a few minutes. And then we have to cover it with something because the birds are gonna eat it and we don't want the rains to wash it away. So you can use a couple of products. In fact, there's three or four you can use. You could use topsoil if you wanted to, but that kind of gets a little crusty once in a while. I like to use straw, straw or peat moss. Peat moss is the very best, but straw, this straw here is not hay, by the way. Hay has weed seeds in it. This does not have weed seeds in it. And this straw, you'd shake it out, and as you shake it out, and we'll show you later on in the program, shake it out to it'll be a 50 to 60% cover, and it will cover the soil and the grass will come right up through the straw. And when it does, turn on your mower and chop it up and it's gone and you bagged it right up. We could also use salt hay. Now here's another product, very similar to the straw, except this is considerably more expensive, but it does work. And the salt hay can also be mowed right up into the bag when the grass comes up through it. And you might have to rake a few spots where it was a little too heavy. So cover your seed with either topsoil, peat moss, straw, or salt hay. Straw is the most economical of all. Peat moss is the very best. Okay? We talked earlier about trimming out this tree and getting all the limbs out to let some sunlight down through here, and they've done a wonderful job. They've got it all cut through down through here, all the way down through, and the limbs, it's a beautiful structured tree. Although I see one more, if Bob could come over here and cut off one more limb. I'd like to cut this limb off right here. 
if they could get that one off right there, because that's going to go right into the t telephone wires out there and the power lines. So let's get this one off, if you could. Get your saw going there. Hold the ladder for him there, Carl. There we are. All right, go ahead. You notice he undercut that first. You have to undercut it first, otherwise it strips down. Very good, very good. Bob, see this circle we have around here? That you've got a nice circle designed around there. Let's try and put some ground cover. Could you get a couple of guys to put some ground cover in there? I would like to use this ajuga. We can put this ajuga all around the edge like this, as you, as you guys know how to do it very well. Put the ajuga around the edge, and where's our pack of sander right behind me here? And we'll put the pack of sander in the center, okay? So you go ahead and get your crew in onto that. Whichever fellows you're going to have do that, they can start that job. So we'll put the ajuga around the edge and, 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 uh, and the pack of sander in the center. We talked about this earlier in the show, and instead of using grass here, you see, uh, we couldn't get it to grow anyway because it's too, too many roots. So we uh, opt to do this, this pack of sandra and ajuga. This ajuga, by the way, is, is a variegated leaf. You can see the, uh, uh, there's purple, white, and green in that foliage. And as this gets larger and grows to be more mature, it's going to make a beautiful border with the dark green pachysandra in the background with this beautiful new lawn that we'll have here. Yeah, we're planting this along in here like this and getting all this nice pachysandra, this ground cover in here. And when we get it all planted, it's going to look real nice. And then we'll have this ajuga around the outside edge. And of course, when we get this done, then we'll go ahead and, uh, and start the seeding. And that's another phase of our beautiful landscaping job here. It's going to look really great. It's going to look like a new front yard. I'm telling you, it's going to look like a brand new front yard. All righty now. Oh, that's a good idea. I had forgotten all about those rocks. Is that, that's a neat idea, using those rocks in there. And that gives a little more character to it. Uh, when you're landscaping with just plants is one thing, but when you use some rocks, that's nice. And you got the ajuga around in there. You got a mugo pine in the center. That mugo pine will mushroom up nice and big and green. And you've left space in here to put some crocuses and some flowers in there. That's a good idea. I like that. That's great. Now, as we come along here, you've designed this really nice here. The designers, we've got a nice curve along here, a real nice curve that goes all the way around, real smooth and nice. Originally, there was just a straight planting in here with not much imagination, but this gives you great, great imagination here. And it's easier for mowing, too. And uh, now we got some color for mums in there, and I see that they're leaving some space to put some tulips. And in the summertime, they can put in patients and geraniums and various plants in there. This is going to look great, guys. It really is. And there's our corner plant over there that's going to hide the gutter. I can see that. That's another corner plant. Just plant them right side up, that's all. Green side up, guys, okay? Green side up, Green side up guys. Yeah, there you go. We'll have to give them a good drink after, after we get them all planted, and we're going to soak them down good with water. And while they're getting a drink of water, I might have a drink of something else. I'm going to need it.
Now what we're going to do here is I want to seed this whole lawn nicely, and then when we get it seeded, we're going to reverse rake it. So I want you to go over there and start that job right now. Now watch what he's going to do here. He's going to start seeding here. Get your seed there. There you go. The right setting. Go all the way down. Now while, what we're putting down here is what we talked about earlier. Is that tough clay that grows in the sun, grows in the shade, grows in the sand, and grows in the clay. The poorer the soil, the better this grass is going to grow. It's going to be super grass. It really grows. It'll grow in the shady area and it'll grow in the sun real nice. All right. Now, Carl, start reverse raking there. Reverse rake right behind him there. Press hard and go real hard all the way down. Now, what he's doing there is he's folding the seed in and the lime and the fertilizer at exactly the right depth. Okay, that's called reverse raking. That's a very important step when you're seeding a lawn because if you can't leave the seed lay on the top because the birds will eat about 20% of that seed and we don't want the rain to wash it away. So as he's reverse raking that, that's just a nice ticket right there. That looks good. Now, if he were to turn the rake around the other way, he'd turn all kinds of sod and clumps and rocks up. We don't want to do that. Now, as soon as they're through reverse raking this, we're going to cover half the lawn with straw and the other half with peat moss. And we'll show you the difference and how nice it looks, too. Uh-huh. OK, you're doing a good job. That's great. Now, let me show you something, Carl, just a second. Let me walk over here. here. If you stay on this side of it, like this, and go like this, and then reverse, just like a dance. See that? See that? And you won't have your tracks. OK? Go ahead. Stay on this side. There you go. See what I'm doing here? I'm shaking the straw out at a 50 to 60% cover. 50 to 60 percent cover means that 60 percent of the ground has disappeared. There you go. You see? Straw is very economical in putting it down. This is just like that. Now, when that grass comes up, it's going to come right up through that straw. And we just mow the lawn and bag the straw, and it's gone. Now, there'll be a few places you'll have to probably rake up a little bit here and there. But most of this straw will, will disappear when you mow. Now, if you were to ask me which is the best, straw or peat moss, I would tell you peat moss is really the best for this reason. It holds 10 times its weight in water, so you don't have to water it as much. Straw, the water goes uh, through the straw a little bit, but, but still it keeps the birds off and it'll help. But uh, peat moss is, is the best product. We're going to use that on the other side. And hold it up over there, gentlemen. No, no, we want to put peat moss over there. I want to show the difference. I want to show the difference. I want peat moss on the other end. All of this area right here is done. We've, we've limed it and fertilized it, seeded it, and put straw over it. So this is the finished product right here. All right, except for watering. We've got to water, of course. Now, on the other half over here, I'd like to take you over here and show you the use of doing the same kind of a lawn using peat moss. And I like peat moss much better. I'm going to slide this bale over here. I'm going to show you a little trick on how to do that peat moss. All right, let me get it over here. Now, if anybody's open peat moss, they know it's very hard to get apart. So you hit it a few times with the shovel. There we are. Now, cut that open. There, now. What you do, you don't sprinkle this out through your fingers like this. Nah. Here's what you do. Reach in there like this, and you blast it along there. See that? Look at that. See that? Then you slide it along like a sled. And that covers the seed at just the right depth so those birds don't get it. And it holds the moisture. Ten times the weight of, of the weight of peat moss.
See how easy that is to get out of there when you beat it with a shovel? There you are. Now, we'll, we'll turn the water on a little while. We'll water that down. And we'll water this down. Sweep up the sidewalks. And job done. Looks pretty good. Looks darn good, I think so. This is a new yard. Oh, yeah. It looks great. Hey, how you doing? Okay, I'm it looks glad you like it. Oh, I love it. It's wonderful. And you're planting tulips, well, I see. Well, yes, I see. I was planting Kinda a like little... Kind of like the finishing touch? Yeah, uh, it's a finishing touch. Just a little extra here. Uh, planting a smile for spring, you see. Because next spring, when you see these come up, you're going to smile when you see it. Oh, that's this great. really looks nice. They did a nice job here. Oh, it's beautiful. I'd like to tell you uh, how to care for these and water for these now, because that's, that's the most important part. We did our part. Now it's up to you to do your part, all mm -hmm. right? So, when you're watering the lawn, try and water it every morning and every evening for just a few minutes. Soak it down real good, okay? okay. But as far as the bushes are concerned, now that's a little different. They have to have deep watering. That means okay. laying a sprinkler along too here, and I have a, a soaking sprinkler that you can leave on for, let it on for about 45 minutes to an hour. And if you don't want to use the sprinkler, use your garden hose, but water once a week, once a week deep. Okay, and deep meaning you just lay the hose along? Right, right down along the base of the plant. Okay, right so it gets here. down into the roots very well. Right down into the roots. And I also noticed that um, you guys trimmed out all the uh, excess limbs and everything, and we lost that big limb that was leaning towards the house. Yeah. Now, it looks wonderful. Now, yeah. this again would just allow more light in to, right. to make the grass grow better, right? The, the grass, grass grow cover. better, and the ground cover will be solid. Next time, this time next year, they'll be all solid. Well, this okay. is wonderful. Again, thank you very much. It's, all right. I'm glad you decided to make this special house call.